So this is the missing slides uh, of the lecture treatment of grossly carious lesions. We were speaking about uh, amalgam foundation and we say amalgam can be used as a foundation under indirect restoration. Now to uh, um, place the amalgam we need secondary retention and the secondary retention for foundation is the same as secondary retention for normal amalgam restoration. We can use bins, we can use slots and we can use the bulb chamber to place our uh, or to use it as a retention uh, uh, mean. For the bin retained foundation, we say that uh, it's used in severely broken teeth with a few or no vertical walls when an indirect restoration is indicated. Uh, and we say the difference between bin retained foundation compared to the bin retained restoration is the position of the bins. In uh, the foundation, you need to place a crown above the uh, restoration that you will place. So it's most important to place your bin holes uh, away from from the external surface more than you place it for a normal uh, amalgam restoration. فمثلا إذا كنا بنحط في الحالة الطبيعية إذا عملنا استعملنا البنز مع الريستوريشن كفاينل ريستوريشن مش كفاونديشن عادة بنبعد عن الدنتي انامل جنكشن بمسافة 0.5 ل 1 مليمتر في حالة استعملنا الأمالجام كفاونديشن لازم أبعد أكثر من 0.5 ل 1 مليمتر فبحدد الدنتي انامل جنكشن تبعتي وببعد عنها أكثر من 1 مليمتر تقريبا مثلا 1.5 ل 2 مليمتر عشان أخلي في مسافة للتحضير اللي رح أحضره للسن حتى يركب عليه الـ indirect restoration Also in some situation I might need bending of the bins uh, when I place them uh, uh, in the foundation uh, restoration uh, Bending I send you in the quiz number 2 and 3 you can see some pictures of bending uh, We say that the uh, bin might be very long, long so uh, to uh, Make sure that we have 2 mm occlusal clearance. We might need to bend the bends uh, to create this space. Now, in short, the clinical crown and where I can't place bends, I can use a slot retained foundation. Uh, foundation slots are placed slightly uh, more axial. The same concept with bins, we will place our slots more axially to create as, um, enough space for the finish line that we will prepare for indirect restoration. Slots are used to oppose locks in vertical wall or to provide retention where no vertical walls are present. And the same concept about the comparison between slot and bins apply whole, uh, here also for foundations. So uh, what you need to understand for bins or a slot when you use them uh, to retain a foundation you need to be more slight or slightly more axial when you place them. Uh, the depth for uh, the slot should be 0.5 to 1 millimeter and the length should be uh, 2 to 4 millimeter. Now the final uh, type of retention for foundation, you can use the chamber retention. Uh, you remember when you uh, finish your RCT, uh, you fill your uh, uh, the, your canals with the gutta -birka. Now uh, the bulb chamber might be uh, shallow, medium or uh, deep. When you have a deep chamber, almost 4 to 6 millimeter, there is no advantage to enter inside the root canal space. So you will use this deep chamber and then you will uh, condense your amalgam inside it and the uh, undercut present in the chamber will hold the amalgam in place. So this is uh, a type of retention for amalgam. So um, chamber retention is used only when the dimension of the bulb chamber is adequate to provide retention and the thickness of dentine in the area is enough. Almost 4 to 6 mm is enough to hold the amalgam. Now if you have the bulb chamber between 2 to 4 mm, you might need to enter a little bit in the, uh, uh, the canal themselves, remove a little bit of the gutta -birka and condense your amalgam there to increase the retention. If the bulb chamber is less than 2 mm, it's better not to use the bulb chamber for retention and it's better to use posts uh, 
uh, either uh, prefabricated post or cast post and core uh, to retain the amalgam. So the bulk chamber, if it's less than two millimeter in length, it's better not to use it for retention. Try to find any other type of retention, like using prefabricated or um, uh, cast post. If the bulb chamber between two to four, you might use the bulb chamber with additional entrance inside the root canal and use them for uh, retention and if the bulb chamber is uh, uh, between four to five six millimeter then it's enough to hold your restoration and you can use it for retention so this is all about the third type of uh, retention uh, for amalgam the uh, foundation amalgam foundation now the last type of uh, amalgam uh, restoration in uh, grossly carious teeth is the bonded amalgam and this is a recent concept they try to bond the amalgam to the tooth structure in the same way they bond composite to the tooth structure using micromechanical retention now for cavity preparation it's the same concept as you prepare any amalgam uh, cavity preparation the only difference is the step of uh, bonding after we finish the cavity design uh, we will uh, place our bonding agent. Uh, you will condition the tooth like you do with composite, you will place phosphoric acid, then you will apply your bonding agent. Uh, in case of amalgam, you will not use light cured bonding agent. You should use either uh, auto or dual cure resin, cement, like vanadia. Uh, uh, the difference is um, uh, the bonding agent is actually not chemically bond to the amalgam. Uh, what will happen that your bonding agent will uh, react with dentine in the same way as it reacts with dentine in case of composite. Uh, however, you should uh, start condensing your amalgam over the bonding agent before it sets. Now, once you condense your amalgam, the amalgam uh, will uh, in, uh, interact or will uh, the, the resin cement will enter inside your amalgam, forming resin tags after it sets. So you place your uh, bonding resin, it will be a, f a fluid uh, in consistency, then you will start condensing your amalgam. Uh, at this time, the, um, the fluid resin cement will uh, set and it become like a solid and this solid has entered inside the amalgam then you will have like a micro mechanical retention between your resin and amalgam so it's not a chemical bonding it's a micro retention of the resin inside the amalgam you will con condense your amalgam before the uh, final set of the resin or bonding agent material after condensing the amalgam you will continue normally with the um, burnishing and carving and uh, correcting the contour and occlusion. So the only step is you, that you need to take care is the bonding step. Now there is uh, little literature about um, the uh, advantage of bonding amalgam to the tooth structure and uh, there is uh, no evidence that it has better um, uh, um, micro leakage or uh, less micro leakage compared with the uh, conventional uh, amalgam restoration however it's a new technique and um, it still needs uh, some more uh, clinical studies to improve uh, its effectiveness now after we finish our uh, design of the cavity and use the retention uh, and resistance form that we need um, uh, we will go to the restorative part. Restorative part usually we need to use desensitizer or bonding system depending on what you choose at the end. The desensitizer we speak about them in the, uh, um, the lecture about uh, bases and liners. You can use either Gloma or uh, G5 desensitizer. Uh, you need to place a matrix. You remember uh, those restoration are complex so the type of matrix will matter for you. You can use universal matrix However, it will not cover all part of the tooth structure, so you need to be careful to where to place it, either from buccal side or lingual side, depending on the remaining tooth structure. Uh, a better choice is to use the auto matrix, and we'll speak uh, about it uh, in a few minutes. Uh, and you can also use compound uh, supported cover band. It's like a band made from cover. You place it around the teeth uh, the tooth that you will restore, then you will uh, secure it in place by uh, compound or green stick. Uh, you will hit the compound or green stick and then apply it in the embrasure area after it um, uh, become um, 
cold it will uh, uh, become brittle uh, material and it will hold the cover band in place after you choose your uh, matrix place the wedges make sure everything is good your gingival margin is covered then you will insert your amalgam in the normal way and condense it burnish it carve it and uh, contour it and finish it as usual now the auto matrix has advantage it's a, some advantages it's a convenience matrix uh, it improves visibility it has the ability to place the auto lock uh, loop the auto lock loop you can place it either buckly only or lingually it doesn't have a retainer it's a retainless uh, matrix uh, it decreased uh, time for application uh, however, there is some disadvantage of it. It's, the band uh, is flat and difficult to burnish. Somewhat it's unstable before uh, even after placing wedges. So you need to be careful when you use them. Uh, you, if it's possible to use compound, you can secure it with compound. The development of uh, rubber proximal contour can be difficult. You can see that it's, uh, it's uh, narrow at the cervical area and wide at the uh, occlusal area. So um, the development of uh, proximal contour might be somewhat difficult. Even the buccal and lingual contour, you need uh, to carve it by yourself after you remove the matrix. Now we will speak about some clinical cases. In this um, uh, clinical case, we have a very large amalgam that need to be replaced. After removal of the amalgam, you see how much uh, remains to structure that we have. We have uh, very little. Uh, we remove uh, all the uh, base and liner material and we place a new one. Then we try to place our matrix system using the universal Tuflimeyer matrix retainer. Uh, however, you see, you see you saw that uh, when we place it from the buckle side, we were unable to cover all the buckle surface and we will have a defect in the buckle surface. That's why we try to place it from the lingual side and then we will condense our new amalgam and finally contour it and finish the occlusion. Another example in this uh, photo you can see that we have a different type of uh, retention. Uh, first the black arrow. The black arrow represent um, uh, undercut around the mesial buccal cusp to aid retention. The green one represent the slots. We try to place slots in this area to aid retention. And in the uh, white arrow represent a flat shoulder preparation. We call it for, uh, shoulder preparation. It's in its deep uh, shoulder to uh, aid in distal support. Uh, this means that you have a very wide a flat area that will uh, make like a gingival wall for your restoration to aid in supporting of your restoration. So you can combine different type of retention means to uh, have uh, your final design for the cap. After that, we will start uh, placing our matrix. As I say, we have different type of matrix system that you can use. Uh, try to choose the one that uh, better fit your restoration and the better stability. And then you will start your uh, procedure. 